Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about how to work with 360 footage. There's a couple apps that I've tried out and one of them I really like. Premiere is able to uh, work with 360 footage, but in this video, I'll explain a little bit about why I choose to not really go down that path. Let's jump in. The first thing you want to do to edit 360 footage is go to the insta360.com website. Once you're here, click on downloads. We'll be working with the Insta360 ONE X2 footage, so we're going to click that. And then if we scroll down, we have the Insta360 Studio app. Whether you're on Windows or Mac, you can download which version you'd like. This is the standalone version, meaning you don't need an editing program to work with 360 footage. You can import it, control it all, and export files. But it does also include the plugin for Premiere Pro to uh, play back the footage. However, in order to fully work with the 360 footage in Premiere Pro, you're going to want to scroll down a little more to the GoPro FX Reframe plugin and then download and install that. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this plugin inside Premiere Pro. I found it to be uh, a little bit glitchy. Now, the reason for that could be completely on the Premiere Pro side. Premiere is notorious for being super buggy. So for whatever reason, I did find it a little slow to edit the footage in Premiere Pro. So I just stuck with the Insta360 standalone version. It is a little less convenient working with the standalone program because if I make a change, it's sort of burned in. I can't make a change after the fact because the video is actually exported versus working with it in Premiere Pro with the third party uh, GoPro app, I can actually reframe and make changes on the fly. So depending on the system you're working on or if they've updated it and made it better since I used it, you can choose for yourself which path you want to go. For this video, we're going to focus more on the Insta360 Studio app, so let's dive into that program. So with the app launched, it looks basically like this. You have um, an area on the side where you can import footage and then like other programs, you have this other area where eventually the options will show once you get the footage into the program. Find the folder where your 360 footage is and then highlight what you want to bring in and then import that footage. On the left hand side, you can scrub through the footage by just moving the mouse over the footage and going left to right or right to left. In this program, you can edit with 360 footage and then export as 360 footage. However, after we work with the 360 footage and reframe using keyframes, we're going to then export the non 360 footage video. So once you've decided on the clip you want to import, you double click. And if you scrub through the footage at the bottom, you'll see that it does show everything. This is 360 footage. That's because we're on the 360 view at the top. If we change it to the reframe mode, then scrub through. It now looks like a regular camera where you're just showing one framed angle. So if we set it at the beginning and then scrub through until the skateboarder starts to go, which is, let's say about there. That'll be the start of the clip. So I'm gonna drag the beginning to right there and then we'll quickly go to the end. And because I can't see where the skateboarder ends, what I'm gonna do is just literally click because it's 360 and reframe the footage. So now we can see that the skateboarders landed the trick and then it goes all the way back this way. So I think about right there, we'll end it. Now we've set the in and the out and now we can start to do some editing. So. Of course, at the beginning, I want to show the skateboarder and not myself with the camera. So let's turn it around. We'll frame it on the skateboarder. And then in order to keep the frame in this position sort of locked in place, you need to add a keyframe, much like working in Premiere or After Effects if you're adding keyframes and zooming in on a spot or changing the position. So we can click this button right here. We've now added a keyframe. That's this big yellow icon at the bottom. And then essentially I just scroll around until the frame becomes sort of lost. And at that point, I sort of realign it until I'm happy with the frame. Now, of course, this angle I'm seeing myself. In this case, I'm going to scroll in until I'm out of the frame, hit another keyframe. So essentially between the first keyframe and the second keyframe, it's gonna go from showing the skateboarder to zooming in a little bit on the skateboarder. So let's uh, go back here and we'll show you what it does. Okay, so now we'll keep going. And as you can see, it's cutting part of the skateboarder's legs off, which is not good. So we're gonna aim down like this. And once again, we will zoom in, hit another keyframe. Then we'll go a little further. So the camera eventually starts to go down. So just before it goes down about there, I'm going to click and drag right on the frame and set it about there, hit a keyframe. Then we're gonna move forward to about there. We're gonna go back like this. And then I'm gonna actually zoom out again to about there. 
I'm gonna hit the uh, keyframe button and let's go back and see what that looks like. So, so it's essentially doing an okay job, but I think about halfway through, it could zoom out a bit and be reframed. So, so I add another keyframe in between. Now let's see what that does. Okay, that's looking better. I captured this shot by first having the camera on the left side and then a few seconds later, I sort of move it quickly to the other side. So just before the movement happens, I will make sure I'm on the skateboarder again. I'll zoom in a little bit, add a keyframe, and then as the camera comes around, right at the sort of end of the movement, which is probably around there, I will reframe the camera. And you can see I'm holding the pole really far this way now. So of course we don't wanna show that. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit, add a keyframe. Let's move forward in the timeline a little bit. And you can see I'm cutting off the skateboarder's head so we can tilt up to make sure we're getting everything. Add a keyframe. Now let's go back to make sure that that is what we want. And that looks great. And then right here, we wanna make sure we're adjusted back at the bottom so that we show the skateboard as the skateboarder lands the trick. After that, the skateboarder moves to their right and then I continue back so that we go away from each other and it widens out and reveals sort of the whole location. So I think right when the skateboarder starts to veer to the right, just to mark the frame to start the next animation for the following keyframe and right there, right at the end, I'm gonna then go super wide and we'll hit another keyframe. All right, let's uh, press play and see what that looks like. And of course, because it's 360 footage at any point, let's say on this keyframe here, if you wanted to instead show me, you could do that. And that's of course the magic behind 360 footage. You're capturing everything all at once and then later on you get to reframe and choose where you want the uh, footage to be framed. Another amazing thing with 360 footage is because you're filming everything, it's of course very simple to uh, reframe to vertical footage. Let's go ahead and go to uh, clear current edit data. We'll quickly find our in point and our out point. And then on the right here, you'll see that it says 16 by nine. We can actually choose a whole bunch of other formats like ultra wide or vertical. And vertical is of course good for Instagram reels or TikTok or YouTube shorts where the preferred format is vertical. And then we can just go back to the beginning and sort of do the whole process again. And then just like that, within 30 seconds, you have an entirely reframed uh, clip just for vertical. Now let's say you wanna quickly edit and capture the main action without anything fancy. Very easy to do that, so let's go to the beginning. And we're gonna hit this deep track option at the bottom here. And then what you do is you click and drag over the person or object that you want to track and then hit start tracking. And just like that, it tracked the entire clip itself and it actually did a pretty good job. Let's play it back and I'll show you that it followed the person the entire time. So that's another really cool feature that actually works surprisingly well. Let's go ahead and reset everything. In terms of the stabilization, it does have a built-in stabilizer and it does work very, very well. If you click the top button here, the stabilization type, you can see that it has flow state stabilization on and there's another option for direction lock, which means it'll force the uh, camera to lock on a specific view and it'll stay there the whole time. Once you've edited all the footage and you know, you're happy with where everything is, you've added all your keyframes and you're ready to export. You can go to File, Export. You can either export the reframe video or you can export the 360 video. 
Then you can give the file a name. You can send it to the path on your computer that you like. Down below, you have your bitrate. I typically set this to about 100 if it's uh, exporting into 4K. And for 4K, the resolution is 3840 by 2160. If you're doing vertical, it would be 2160 by 3840. So you'd reverse those. Or you could export to, let's say, high definition and instead of going as high as 4K. And you could do like 1920 by 1080. Or if you're doing vertical HD, you could do 1080 by 1920. For the encoding format, you have H.264, H.265, and then you have the ProRes codec. We have a few different tutorials that discuss all of these, so check those out if you'd like to learn more. But essentially, H.264 is sort of the traditional compressed web format. H.265 is the higher compressed web format. It'll make very, very small file sizes. The image will look great, but some platforms still don't allow it to be uploaded and uh, some editing programs find it a little bit tricky to edit with. But in a lot of cases, we are capturing footage on our Sony cameras in H.265 and then uh, uploading to YouTube, for example, in H.264. If you want the highest quality, which isn't compressed and it'll be the easiest for a computer to edit with, you can choose ProRes. However, I wouldn't really recommend ProRes because it makes such large file sizes that unless you're working on a really, really important project, you're probably best to just go with H.264, or if you're on a faster machine, I would just work with H.265. So let's go to H.264, and then at the bottom, you can leave these unchecked, but I actually like to add both the Color Plus and Remove Grain. Color Plus adds some saturation, it makes the footage pop a little more. And then Remove Grain helps remove some of the noise in uh, the footage. I find that the Insta360 has quite a bit of noise, even in bright daylight. You can see up here, there's still a lot of noise. This is supposed to be a bright blue sky, but there's a lot of artifacts in the top corner here. So because of that, I always export with the remove grain option. It does take a little longer to export, but it does make a big difference. After that, you can either um, add to the queue if you're doing a whole bunch of clips at once, or you can just start the single export and you are good to go. And if you're exporting with 360 video, it's still gonna be one of the three formats. And that's because the footage itself was just filmed with basically two cameras, one on either side of the device. And then the device, in this case, the Insta360, stitches it together in the camera and then spits out the H.264 file with the warped looking uh, 360 footage. When you bring it into the program, that's where the Insta360 plugin or the GoPro plugin can interpret the footage and allow you to reframe and sort of unwarp the footage, allowing you to work better with the 360 footage. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful on how to work with 360 footage. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and comment down below. We have over 100 other filmmaking tutorials on the channel that you can learn from. We put out a video about once a week, so subscribe if you wanna watch more of those videos from us. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Why that is and uh, give you a few extra steps to follow suit on, man, this is a rambling sentence. I should not continue. <laughs>